Where are we off to? Well, we're certainly not in Bellingham anymore. On a, on a ferry. Big ferry. International waters. Uh, I think we're headed to Cumberland. Cumberland, British Columbia? British Columbia. I've heard they got some good trails there. Good trails and uh, not only that, forbidden bikes. Forbidden bikes. You know I'm a fan. Oh, what's up, fanatic? Oh, Welcome hey there, to the Stephane. Forbidden Crib. How are you? Daniel. Oh, that's <laughs> awkward. I've got a... <laughs> Rich picked me up at the crack of dawn this morning. We hopped on this ferry, and now we're headed to Cumberland, British Columbia. What are we going to go do out there? Well, Dan, we are headed to Cumberland, BC to visit my favorite bike brand, Forbidden Bikes, because I just picked up the new V2 Druid. We're going to go chat with their team, see what the new bike's all about, check out Cumberland, see what Forbidden's all about. You've been on the Druid V1, the Dreadnought. I've had the original Druid. It's a absolutely ripping bike. I've been loving mine. So I figure we could uh, chat with their designer, Oli Blight, see what the new bike's all about. On our way. There it is. Oli Blight, what is it that you actually do at Forbidden? I am the bike design engineer okay. here at Forbidden. Owen, the founder, is also a design engineer, so together we make up the engineering team. Cool. I've like biked my whole life. Biking's kind of the reason I like pursued engineering in the first place. Job offer came up, or well, the job rolled, went for it, managed to get it, which I wasn't really expecting. I don't know, I was like in BC where there's a lot of bike brands with a lot of designers. Yeah. And someone was new to it as well, so that Owen could kind of craft the designer out of me that he wanted. So I think that's what played into my favor. I didn't know that at the time until I got the job. A bit surreal sometimes. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey YouTube. Oh, Welcome hey there, to the Stephane. Forbidden Crib. How are you? Daniel. Oh, that was awkward. I've got a, <laughs> get that on I've got a good habit of, of doing exactly that. So I'm glad we've continued the trip. Let's keep it rolling. Let's yeah, keep let's the good times rolling. In. Thanks for having us. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the Forbidden Showroom or office headquarters. Um, this, this thing here is an old chairlift from the Forbidden Plateau Ski Hill. Uh, so that's what the brand's named after, is the Forbidden Plateau riding area. How long have y'all been in this space? We've been in this space just about three years now. So before that, it was kind of ran out of like Owen's garage, basically. And since then, the team's obviously grown a lot, but business has grown a lot. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So is, is all distribution run out of this building? Any like Wild. complete bikes, frame kits, globally come out of this oh, little, little headquarters. Cool. Do you like the MTV crib speed up, up the stairs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> We call ourselves the carpet walkers up here. <laughs> How often do you guys vacuum? Oh, good question. <laughs> and that's here. why I make concrete water. <laughs> <laughs> and not a carpet walker. There's two types of people here. Yeah, you guys want to see the top secret R&D lab? Yeah, let's let's do it. Okay. Well, you can't see. Yeah. So Jamie's our product manager, and then Ollie's uh, yeah. design engineer, bike design engineer. They work in this little zone. Should we get one of those classic CAD moving around the drawing yeah. shot? I'll show you how to move around a, uh, a CAD shot. What we do is you're gonna zoom in, click on this middle button here, and then you can just move it around. I thought for yeah. sure you would have ChatGPT open. Oh, shit, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll head into the warehouse side. A little kitchenette there. That's where we drink our coffees and keep our food cold. <laughs> Humble beginnings, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just the essentials. You should see where we work. <laughs> and then this is the um, like manufacturing assembly area for all of the forbidden bikes around the world. So yeah, so if you come over here, I'll show you where it begins. So we still get all of our carbon uh, overseas, but then we are assembling all the frames here in Cumberland. So all these frames are getting their bearings pushed in, all the hardware put on, all that stuff. So we just got another batch of Druid V2s. Yeah, so bringing everything in-house here, assembly-wise, has allowed us to have a much closer hand on everything, QC-wise. So that was a big motivation for that, as well as having a bit more like flexibility when it comes to build kits and frame kit options for our customers. Well. Shall we maybe get out for a ride? See uh, what these bikes are all about? Absolutely, Dan. We should totally do that. Let's do that. <laughs> Groovy. Yeah. Is that your guys' power boat? You guys That's do a some... Robin and I's boat, yeah. Oh, cool. You want to take a boat tour? You should try. Do the quad. Pull for the quad. Quad. From there. Yeah. <laughs> you got enough speed. Pedal. Definitely. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
You want some of this? Yeah, let's go. The new Druid, the Druid V2. The first one came out in 2019, if I remember correctly. Yes. The version two, we've really checked all the boxes in terms of any hang-ups someone might have about owning a high pivot trail bike. Oh, I have to buy two chains. Oh, I have to run a lower guide. Or, oh, it's more maintenance. We took the time to be like, well, we pinpointed the bits we wanted to... Those pain points that people yeah, were having. Yeah, exactly, and negated them, essentially. So there's no need for two more chains. There's no need for the lower guide. And then the refinements we've made to the suspension and the hardware, the idler, linkage. Well, I'll tell you, following you and Stefan around the past few days and getting to spend some time on the new Druid V2, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. You guys have some techie climbing here. Oh. Hey. Well, here, Steph, here comes some public embarrassment. All right. Oh. <laughs> what key was that? Four. Ten fault. No, it's just four. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh! Come on. Oh. Come on. Well, we should move on. Well, we really liked what we had with the Druid V1, the original one. Um, we just wanted to basically refine what we already had. Yeah, I noticed that you've now made all of the pivots accessible without, for example, having to move the shock. Yeah. Everything is much more accessible. So if something is loose, you can just go in and yeah, tighten exactly. very easily. Like, we wanted to get rid of the need for a lower chain guide. On the V1s, the chain guide is there to give us the chain wrap you need, essentially. Good. You can see the main pivot is in front of the seat tube. Here's the main pivot. It's now moved rearward of the seat tube. So it's given us more chain wrap, which allows us to not have to run a chain guide. Like, are you guys finding that you ride the Druids more than bigger bikes? Is the Druid your go-to bike? For this zone, like honestly, Cumberland is a perfect Druid bike because yeah. there's nothing like where the bike gets in over its head. Mm -hmm. Wait, but you pulled from back here? No. Yeah, yeah. pull from there huh. into, I'd say like here's the sweet spot. Yeah, that looks better. But I went to that hole. That's like 30 feet. No way. Another thing that has remained is that this is still a 130, 150 yes, travel bike. Exactly. We weren't, we were very reluctant to just throw more travel at this to make it a more, like an updated, more capable bike. And I think we've proven that because it's a 130 bike that rides more capable than the numbers might suggest. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's done with that refined leverage curve as well as the tweaks we've had done to the geometry. We're half a degree slacker on the head angle, steeper seat tube, um, so then, but now having a longer front center means that the rear centers have grown slightly as well to meet the same balance we wanted from the old bike to this bike. Oh yeah, I can't see shit. We've obviously got two of our AWS races on it now as well. That's, that I think, it, I already th had pretty good success. I mean, they speaks loads to this bike. Yeah, they're running it with 160 fork just to help them out a little bit, mm -hmm. but they're still running completely stock rear ends and linkage. Mm -hmm. They like that shorter travel because they can generate more speed from pumping the bike. They're not wasting energy like driving a load of basically shock movement or suspension movement. Yeah. Like, a dreadnought sells itself for having 
enough travel. Yeah. Whereas you've got to persuade customers to opt for a bike with less travel, I think. Yeah, but no, that's absolutely the case. Like these 130, 120 mile travel bikes are, will in fact offer more fun yes. for more people the majority of the time. Exactly. They only want like the more travel for those 10% of their year when they're in the bike park or shopping or whatever. You end up getting a lighter bike, which just makes pedaling it that much more enjoyable. Yeah. Like you said, you're, you're able to pump more, you're able to feel the trail more. It doesn't like deaden things as much. And for the majority of trails, most people are riding, myself included, Yeah. like that bumps the that fun factor more than like the five, 10% of the time exactly. you're riding something. And then I think the flip side for this particular bike is versus say something like the Stump Jumper, yeah. the Specialized Stump Jumper, which that bike is a, it feels like a smaller bike. It doesn't ride with the same sort of confidence that this one does. So, um, you know, you can take a 130 mil Druid and really, like you said, race enduro like at the EWS level yeah. on it, which you're not gonna see anyone on the Specialized team rocking the Stump Jumper on those tracks. There's something about the suspension design that you guys have got going here. That, yeah. That really like elevates what 130 actually means yeah. to the user. <laughs> oh, my name's Doug. You've made this change with the new suspension design to retain the characteristics, exactly. the pedaling yeah. characteristics, the riding characteristics on the original bike. Yeah. So we've still got like a, the same philosophy behind the leverage curve. Mm -hmm. We've just taken a good amount of time to refine the leverage curve we had. It's more supple off the top. We have a more sensitive, supportive mid-stroke. And then we've still got that amazing bottom out resistance, bottom out support that the V1 already had. In the original drawings we had, it was a single pivot design, mm -hmm. but we couldn't get the characteristics and the kinematics out of a single pivot with this more rearward main pivot. So now we have a horse link pivot right here between the chain stay and the seat stay. And yeah, that's allowed us to engineer the specific anti-rise we want from the system. The anti-squat, we now have a fixed idler position. So the idler is now fixed to the main frame rather than fixed to the rear triangle itself. So the, Id the idler doesn't move now with the swing arm. The idler's in one place. That allows us to have anti-squat that drops off deeper in the travel. comes back to that tool for the job, right? We think high pivot 130 and 155 mil bikes are the tool for the job, but I wouldn't say we're a high pivot brand. <laughs> if we were to make a short travel bike than a say a 130, mm -hmm. I personally don't, it's not gonna be high pivot. Yeah. Because that isn't the tool for the job for that travel range of bike. Mm -hmm. It, you it, see the trails we ride, it kind of makes sense to how we came to this solution, essentially, for the problem we set ourselves, mm -hmm. of something that carry speed can go through the rough stuff and not get fucked around. Mm -hmm. This is it's what we came up with. One thing, cool thing that you all do, uh, that very few other brands do, is increase this length as the size of bike increases. And you do that, why do you do that? So we call that proportional geometry. Mm -hmm. um, so what that means is, as the front is growing at a given rate, the rear is growing at the same rate to maintain the ratio and balance between the front center and the rear center. So you, you place the rider where you want them in between the wheels. Yeah. And then as, as, the, the, as the bikes get bigger, yeah. S1, S2, S3, yeah. um, you're also growing that rear. So you always yeah. feel the same. Exactly, because you think a bigger rider has more range, has more freedom of movement to mm -hmm. move around. So given that window they're working in to stay in the middle of the bike, 
a rider that's six foot will have a proportionally sized window for them to work in to mm -hmm. maintain balance, if that makes sense. Yeah. So riders of different sizes on different sized bikes will have the same characteristics. Tried to baseball slide into second base. Woo! Oh. Bent my finger one direction. It didn't want to go. Okay. Boom. Went the dynamite. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm good though. Super man. This was 65, is that right? 65, 65 and a half. 65 and a half. And this is 65. On the dot. Yeah. Cool. And then it goes to 64 and a half in the mullet configuration. This is actually my first time ever riding a mullet bike. Right. I. Honestly, I forgot that it was a mullet bike until this morning when I pulled it. We had rode yesterday and I had completely forgot it was a mullet, um, which, you know, might tell you something about, it's not like massively different. You're, if you love 29ers, you're not gonna like hate a mullet setup. Um, but what advantages do you, in your, in your, in Forbidden's eyes does that offer you? Like who might, who might that be beneficial for? So the geo tweaks that happen when you put it in 27.5 is it gets half a degree slacker head angle, as well as seat tube. Mm -hmm. So therefore the size in comes in by five mil, the yeah. stack goes up by five mil. Very small. Man. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. But the front and rear centers stay the same. Why, uh, why the switch to S sizing? I think I saw some marketing copy out there, but yeah. let's get it from the horse's mouth. Why, so, why not small, medium, large? Well, we don't want like people get so stuck in, in their groove of like, I'm a large bike, I'm a medium bike. Medium. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we wanna basically like, educate people and let them choose the ride they want, the mm -hmm. characteristics they want from the bike they're riding. Yeah. So for someone of a given size that is looking for stability and speed and out and out pace, mm -hmm. they might want to size up. Someone that's rides somewhere with tighter corners, tighter trails, they might want to size down. Yeah. And we just want to, not that like anyone can learn, that anyone knows that, it's just, Given people, there's not that preconception yeah, going in. Exactly. Oh, I'm five ten. That's pretty medium height. Yeah, um, yeah. And well, then, and how we do rider specific sizing is we move the BB relative to the suspension and the rear center, if that makes sense. If you had compared all the bikes side by side, mm -hmm. you'd notice that the BB on an S2 will be 14 mil further this way. Gotcha. So like you'll see like it cut out a bit more. So basically all of these pivot points move forward or backwards depending on if you're going down in size or up in size. And that is how we grow the chain stays. Gotcha. So some of our heavily stressed components we like to forge because mm -hmm. we think that's the proper way of doing it. Sure. So instead of just like machining it out of a solid block of aluminium, we get a forging blank, which makes the like material, helps strengthen the material. Mm -hmm. And then, so that gives us a near net shape essentially. And then it, it gets machined down to become this. To do maintenance on it, you just pull this and you can work it on your workbench. Pop your bearings out. Super simple. Press new ones in. Um, with our ceiling spaces on the outside, it's a pretty damn sealed unit. Like mm -hmm. not a lot of dust and crap is getting in there. Been surprised to like pull Magnus's linkage apart after a month of riding with Provo and it's like still nice blue grease inside. And, well, that is it's doing a good, it's good job of keeping the crap out. Red. And it's a linkage that you can just pull out very quickly with an eight mil and a five mil, get it on your workbench and then pull the bearings apart and do it all there. How can we make this system as simple and as stress-free for the customer as possible? Mm -hmm. Hence why we've gone for like a steel idler of stock, solid lube bearings, oversized bearings in the linkage. We're trying to negate all those little quirks and excuses people make to be like, oh, I don't want to idle a bike because it's more maintenance, mm -hmm. when realistically it isn't. Yeah. As stock, Everything will have a steel idler mm -hmm. with 18 teeth. So that's 18 tooth, so it's spreading the load over two more teeth. Mm -hmm. Steel, it's gonna last much longer. Everything will also come with a solid lube bearing in here. So what that is, is a 
6902 max bearing with a polymer based self lubricating polymer okay. that the ball bearings are set in and then sealed. So there's basically no room for any crud or dust to get in there. Gotcha. And our test riders have been getting 3,000, 3,500 kilometers on the idlers and the bearings and the bearings come back still feeling like new, awesome. which is good to see. I mean, like we want it to be one of those components that's like a cassette, you know, that lasts a couple of chains. Mm -hmm. You're not having to replace it every time you're replacing the chain. Now, in your mind, who is this bike for? You know, what is the ideal use case for this bike versus the Dreadnought, for example? Let's take that in, in your lineup. It's a real do it all short travel trail bike that I think anyone that's getting into blacks, double blacks, can have a lot of fun, but mm -hmm. it's also going to be fun on your blue flow trails and those more easy going stuff that you don't want to be lugging around a bike with tons of travel. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, following you and Stefan around the past few days and getting to spend some time on the new Druid V2, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. And yeah, I think that for anybody that, that's looking for not a massive big bike, but something that they can have a lot of fun on and play around on and really yeah, like maximize the fun even when things get kind of zesty, yeah. uh, I think this is a phenomenal tool for the job. So, thank nice you. work. You've, done, you've, you've crushed it. <laughs> um, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Writing names onto them.